This image of a young Robert Mugabe leading his people from the tyranny of white minority rule lives at a burial ground called Hero's Acre on the outskirts of Harare. It was that freedom fighter image that fed the cult of personality that saw Mugabe through 37 years in power. He deserves his place in history for that heroic status. But then when he had the chance to lead his country as he'd promised on becoming president to a new, better future, he did the very reverse. Early promise with a focus on education was replaced by an emerging brutality, fueled by personal greed and sustained by violence and corruption. He lived a life of extravagant opulence while his people stood in bread lines and his political opponents languished in jail. Tindai Bitti was one of them, tortured, he says. He was part of a brief power-sharing government between Mugabe and the opposition. Having to sit in the same room with the person who had done this to me, I can't say I forgive him, I, I, I move on. Ten tanks. So too did the country, finally, in 2017, when Mugabe was replaced in a soft coup by members of his own faction, fearful that the aging and ailing president would hand power to his much younger wife, Grace. It was the man who wrested power from him, Emerson Mnangagwa, who announced Mugabe's death, calling him a national hero. But when Mugabe was deposed, few were calling him that. There was jubilation on the streets, a mood of wild celebration. Now, the people of Zimbabwe have a new president to contend with, but one cast in much the same mold as the man he replaced, Mnangagwa and his supporters driving the same old machinery. The passing of the old man, as Mugabe was widely known, will change little in Zimbabwe. The dark side of his legacy is already outliving him. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London.